Hello class, welcome to lab number six using wildcards. So let's go to our virtual machine. The first thing I need you to do is to save this cheat sheet in your cheat sheets folder. You can either click here to download it, right? And what we're gonna do is we are going to move that file that is inside our downloads folder to our repository cheat sheets. Right? You can either do it that way or you can do it manually by right click, save image as, however you look, however you want to do it. Now, wildcards are all about pattern matching, right? The whole point of this is to work with multiple files in a single time. So instead of moving or copying or listing a single file at a time, we are going to work on all of them in a single shot. Similar to how when you go on the, on the graphical interface, you select multiple files based on what you want. The only difference here is that here we are doing it well, we're doing it in the command line, so we're being more efficient. Now, before you start this lab, you need to run this command. This is going to create a folder called lab number six in your home directory. Now, if we do an ls now, you're not going to have that folder there. Also, make sure you clean up your home directory a little bit, because by now you probably have a lot of lab file folders in there that are really garbage, or probably a lab four folder that you don't really need anymore. So make sure you get rid of those folders, like I did over here. Notice that my home directory is as clean as it can be. Now paste the command in your terminal and press enter and it will take care of creating the folder and all the files that we need for this particular lab. Now if we do an ls of lab 6 which you should have in your home directory by now you're gonna see that you have a ton of files over here. This is what we're gonna work with right so let's clear our terminal and let's open another terminal underneath. I'm gonna do this because it would be useful to be inside this lab folder and have a visual idea of what we want to do. So the first instruction for question one with the star wildcard is to list all the log files. Now let's see what we have in the folder first. So here we have a bunch of files. We have some sh file, text files, but what we need is the log files and that's the only thing I want to see in my output of ls. So for that we're going to do ls lab number six and then we're going to start with I don't care about the name. Doesn't matter how many characters are there in the name. What I care is that the extension is that log. This is gonna only include log files inside that folder. As you can see, these are all the log files that we have in that folder. Next, we're gonna create a directory called log files inside the lab six directory. And then we're gonna move all those log files that we listed over here into that log uh, files directory, right? So again, mkdir to create a folder. One second, please. Okay, dokie, we're back in business. So, now, as we were saying, what we need to do is to move all of these guys into a folder called log files. So first, we're gonna create the folder, mkdir, uh, lab six, log files. Now, what we need is move inside lab number six, everything that is a log file, and then move it to lab six, log files. Again, take a look. This is going to match all the log files and it's going to move it to the, to the folder called log files that we just created. So let's press enter over here. And now if we repeat the command in, the, in our bottom terminal to see what we have inside this folder, notice that we have now a folder called log files and all the log files have been moved from here to here. Next, List all the configuration files in the Etsy directory. Okay, so now we're gonna do ls Etsy. Now, configuration files have end in that conf. So this is the extension that we need to match. So we're gonna start that conf. And these are all the configuration files we have over there. Now at this point, it would be a good idea to take a screenshot of our terminal. But what I want to do is, I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need to look at lab, four or any, lab 6 anymore to continue this question. So I'm just going to use this extra space we have here. Now we're going to do a long list of all the configuration files in the Etsy directory. Now obviously for a long list, we are going to need the L flag. Great. Now, I need to narrow down this list by only listing the files that start with letter H. So now I need to make sure that every file starts with letter H. 
or with letter P. So, okay, so start with letter H or start with letter P. Okay, so that means that I will also need to do Etsy P star dot cuff because not only do I need to include those files that start with H, but also the files that starts with P. And they need to be sorted by modified, like when they were modified. Okay, now this is when you open another terminal and then you look at the options of the ls command. And here, like always, we are going to find the option that allows us to sort by the last time the file was, uh, by, by the file size, right? And we know that the option for this is s, right? Uppercase s, and this is gonna give us sorted by, sorry, lowercase s, sorted by their modif the, 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 the size of the file. Uh, lowercase s or size, print the allocated size of each file in blocks. Now this here is what I'm looking for, my mistake, uppercase s, which sort by file size. Great, so now we are going to provide uppercase s over here, but we're not done. Now we need to modify the output of that command so that it looks like this, but if you look at this output over here, right, now let's do a long list real quick, right, ls of our home directory. Now notice that we have the permissions here and we have the permissions here. That's good. But we don't have group or owner in this output. So we need to exclude this. And this is when we start using a little bit of our common sense because we need to include some more options here. Now to remove these two, we use G and G. No group for capital G and lowercase g is for the user. So we're gonna do G, G, and this is gonna get rid of um, owner and group. GG is not good, it's not good game, this isn't Call of Duty, yet, it will be soon. Now, we need to modify the file size so that it shows in human readable format. Now, for that, we do letter H, and if you read the options again, notice that we have it right over here. So we're gonna do H for human readable. Now, this is the tricky part because it's the first time we see it. How do I modify the date so that it looks like this? I gave you a list of control characters that would allow you to do this, and it's over here. Now, there is an option of the ls command that modifies the date, and we do that by looking at time. So if we go all the way over here to time, time style, look at the description, time style, and then equals the style time. So the time and date format with minus L. See time style below. Now, if you open the manual of LS, you're gonna see a section for time style. But to save you time, I'll give you the formula. So what we do is that we provide time style equal plus, and then over here, we're gonna provide the control character that we want to modify this output as. If you look at this, month, day, and year, percentage D is what we need, so we're gonna do percentage and uppercase D, and this is gonna give us the output that we're looking for. Again, we got rid of group and owner with GG. We modified, we, we're gonna sort this out by file size using uppercase S. We're gonna do a long list with L, and we're gonna do human readable file sizes with H. And finally, we modify the, the output of the date with month, date, year, using percentage D as a control character. We're going to include everything that starts with H and is a configuration file, and everything that starts with P and it's a configuration file. Press enter over here and notice that the output should match what you have over here. See this? It matches exactly what we have over here, except for the date. Obviously, the date is going to be different. Now, we have completed question number one. Let's take a screenshot of our computer. Now, if um, you're having problems still getting the shortcut for uh, flame shot. Just make sure that you do the same thing we did at the beginning of the semester where we added a shortcut for flame shot and we removed the default shortcut for, uh, for a screenshots in Ubuntu. Now we're gonna save this file and we're gonna go to... oops, I triggered the wrong thing. There you go, it's inside my virtual machine. That's what I need. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna save and we're gonna go to CIS 106F22, labs, and let's create a folder here called lab number six. And then here we're gonna call this question1.1.png. Good. Next, we are going to use the question mark wildcard. So for the question mark wildcard, 
These wildcard matches only one character at a time. It's different from the star that matches a ton of them, this matches only one. Now, let's clear our terminal so that we can get cracking. Now, list only the hidden files inside the lab6 directory. Now, to, to list the hidden files, we need to remember that hidden files start with a period at the beginning. But the problem here is that we have two more symbols over here that represents the previous work in the, the previous directory or the parent directory and also the current directory. So if we do ls minus a and we do period start and say, okay, so this is going to give me all the hidden files because it's going to match everything that starts with a period. Remember that my present working directory also starts with a period and my parent directory starts with the periods so this guy is gonna match these two guys and he's gonna list everything inside them and it's also gonna list everything inside my current directory so this doesn't uh, doesn't get the output that I want this doesn't do what I needed to do so we need to be more specific here and this is where the question mark is, is becomes useful because now I'm gonna say give me everything that starts with a period but has one character after the period. So that includes this. So we don't want that. Because period and then one character. No. Give me also anything that has another character after the period. And then I don't care about the name of the file. So give me a period and then two characters after the period. And then I don't care about the rest. If you press enter over here, notice that what we get is hidden files. Now what we're going to do here is, we're going to clear this and we are going to go inside our lab6 folder. Then we're going to clear from here and we're going to say, hey, give me everything that starts with a period, has two characters after the period, and then I don't care about the name of the file. Press enter and notice that we have all of this stuff, all of this stuff inside the lab number six folder. Now, if we do ls minus a over here, notice that what we match over here was exactly the same thing, which means this command work as we are expecting it to work. Remember that minus a is gonna list all the files in your, in a given directory that are hidden, excluding the two periods and the period. Now, let's clear our screen and let's do ls and start so that we can have something for the submission. Now, in most instances, ls minus capital A will do the trick here. But there are times where you want more than your, uh, you, you would want to be more specific on your on the output of your command. And here is when using wildcards and a combination of options in your commands become useful. I included this over here just for the demonstration of the question mark wildcard. The question mark wildcard. Now let's follow along with number two. List all the files with two letters, file extension in the lab six directory. Mm. Now this is when we go inside lab number six and we take a look at what we have in here. So I want to match everything that has a two letter file extension. So notice that this is two letters, but this is three. So here what we do is we do ls and we say hey. I don't care, you know what, let's include hidden files as well. I don't care, um, I don't care the name of the file, no, no, I don't care, but I need the file to have a two letter extension. Notice how I include the period over here because the period is in each and every one of these files. What, I ma what matters the most here is that after this period I only see two characters. So when I press enter over here, notice that what I get is all the sh file because those are the files that contain a two letter file extension. Inside the lab6 directory, list all the files that start with letter L. Okay, so all the files that start with letter L. So great. Have one character after letter L, so I need to put a question mark there. And the letters st, so I need to put the letters st. The rest of the name is that is irrelevant. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a star there because I don't care what else goes after the ST. But I care about having one character after letter L and the letters ST followed after that. Press enter and notice that we have last, list, and lost and they all match this criteria. Inside the lab six directory, 
list all the files that have an underscore and two characters before the file extension. Okay, so again, we're gonna do a list. And then what we need is, an underscore, so underscore. Two characters before the file extension. So, pam pam, and then a period. And then a period. Now, here's the thing. I don't care what the extension is, but I need to. It needs to have two characters before the extension. But here's the thing. They're telling me, give me all the files that have an underscore, and then two characters before the extension. So this can be read as any character that has an underscore either at the beginning or in the middle or that it matches just this press enter and notice what we have underscore 05 underscore 04 all of these characters match the criteria that we specified over here because they have an underscore here and then two characters now Inside the lab six directory, list all the files that have, okay, we did this part already. My apologies, I haven't had any coffee and I'm having a Red Bull right now. Okay, okay. We can close this and we can take a screenshot of this. Let's save it and put it in here. Question 2.1.png. Now, for question number four, we're gonna be, sorry, for question number three, we're gonna be using the brackets wildcard. And the brackets wildcard are used for matching sets of characters. Okay, so let's clear our terminal. List all the files that start with an uppercase letter. So obviously inside the lab six folder, because that's where we're working. Now, that's gonna be ls. And then here in the brackets, we're going to include a to z. And this is gonna match one character, as long as they have one character that has one uppercase letter at the beginning and we're gonna do one star because we don't care about the rest of the file name press enter and what do we get documents and expenses because those are the only two characters that match our searching criteria list all the files that start with an uppercase letter or a number so now we're going to expand this and say also give me anything that starts from zero to nine so they either start with an uppercase letter or they start with a digit from zero to nine press enter and we got 25 and we also get documents and expenses. List all the files that have a number in the file name. Now, this is fun because now I don't care where the number is as long as it is in the name of the file. So we do want to start here and in the middle, we put our digit zero tonight and then we put another star in the end. Again, this is gonna look for a number either at the beginning, in the middle or in the end. Press enter and look at what we got. Every single one of those files have a number somewhere in their file name. List all the files that start with a lowercase letter. Okay, cool. Start with a lowercase letter. So A to Z. Have a number before the file extension. So before the file extension has a number. So I'm gonna put a star over here because I don't care about the rest of the name, but I care that there is a number right after the extension and I don't care what extension the file has let's read this again it starts with the lowercase letter I don't care what else is after the lowercase letter but I care that after all of that mumbo-jumbo we have a number right before the period and the extension it doesn't matter so I'm gonna press enter over here and notice that each and every one of those files have a number before the extension and they all start with a lowercase letter. Let's take a screenshot of our terminal over here and save it. Question 3.1. Next, we're gonna use brace expansion. Brace expansion is a way of creating arbitrary strings, right? Strings that will be used by a command to perform a specific task. The easiest way that I find to explain brace expansion is by creating folders and files. Now, imagine you need to create this folder structure over here, right? So 
I'm gonna do clear and I'm going to do I have to do this? Yeah, I can do this from anywhere. So I'm gonna do this from my home directory. Clear. Right? And actually to make my life uh, to make my organization of files simpler in my computer, I'm just gonna do everything inside lab six. So imagine that I need to create that, that particular folder structure, right? And you don't know Brace Expansion. Obviously, you need to create full wallpapers first. So we're going to do MKDIR, MKDIR, and then wallpapers. Wallpapers, enter. Then I'm going to do MKDIR, wallpapers, cars. Then I need to do MKDIR, wallpapers, cars, 1080p, 1080p, 1080p. Then I need to do MKDIR, cars 2k and then the same thing 4k this is cumbersome and annoying there is a way that we can do this in a single shot and that's where brace expansion comes handy so I'm gonna remove my wallpapers folder and I'm gonna do it with brace expansion so I'm gonna do mkdir and now I'm gonna provide an option of the mkdir command for creating a parent folder and a child folder at the same time and here I'm gonna type wallpapers wallpapers then I'm going to open a brace and close a brace. Inside this brace, I'm going to provide the first layer of directories, which is cars. Cars. Then inside cars here, right? It is only one layer, cars. Then inside cars, I'm going to make these three folders. And all I have to do is list them and separate them by a comma. Do not put a spaces here. Do not put a spaces. 1080p, comma, 2k, comma, and then 4k press enter and now if we do three wallpapers notice that my directory structure was created and I made a mistake see if I if I'm providing a single a single um, a single folder name over here I don't need to include these guys because it's a single folder so I'm gonna remove the wallpapers folder and fix that real quick that was my mistake my apologies so let's gonna remove this and remove this. And now if we do three again, notice that we got rid of it. Because if I'm only providing one single folder name here, there is no need for the brackets. I'm not expanding anything. But in this case here, I'm providing three that are gonna be created inside cars. Therefore, I need to put this into brackets and then separate them by a comma. Now, this also works for removing. Like let's say I wanna remove 2K and 4K from wallpapers. I can do RM minus R, wallpapers, cars, and only remove 2K and 4K. And notice that when I do three again, those two folders were removed. See, I save time because I can specify what I want the command to do, which files I want the command to eliminate. And I can do this by providing a comma separated list of values. Now, Let's, uh, this answers the question over here, so I'm just gonna do clear now that I have explained that, and I'm gonna remove the folder and do the command one more time, and do a tree. Now let's do this one. Now in this one over here, we have this folder and this folder, and then these two guys here. Now how do we do this one? Oh, well, quite, quite simple, we're gonna do mkdir minus p again, then we're gonna do wallpaper, sorry, we're gonna do assets, assets. Then the first level is these two folders. So over here, I'm gonna say, give me images. So create two folder called images and one called video. Uh, let's make a plural, right? Why not? Now, inside this folder and also inside this folder, create a folder called large and a folder called small. So now we're gonna provide another set of values called large and then a small. And what this does is MKDIR first goes and say, oh, okay, so you're giving me minus P. So that means I need to create this folder. Oh, but you're giving me two values here. So that means I need to create a folder called images and a folder called video. Oh, but wait, inside images and videos, you want me to create large and a small, no problem. Say no more, my fam. Done. Now we're gonna do three assets. And over here we have images, large and small, videos, large and small. And that's it. Let's move along to problem number three. So in problem number three, we have um, a combination of two commands here because not only would you're gonna have to do MKDIR, but you also need to do touch because this is a file. This is not a folder. But we have here docs and books. 
Then inside books we have history, and then we have math, and then we have fall, and then we have a spring. Okay, so we're gonna do mkdir minus p assets, then books, sorry, docs, then books, and then here we have history, I'm just gonna call it his, and then math, and then inside these two guys I'm gonna create fall and also a spring. And we're done. But the thing is that inside fall and spring, I need to create a file called book.pdf. So I'm gonna repeat the same command, but in this case, I'm gonna provide the file called book.pdf. And because this is a file, I must use the touch command instead. Press enter, and now let's do a tree of docs. Voila. Now let's do, let's take a screenshot of this because we're one half a space to do problem number four. And let's call this question uh, 4.1 PNG. Great, now let's clear this. Okie dokie. Brace expansion is handy in other scenarios too, like we were explaining before. Create a directory in your home directory called lab6q5. Okay, so we're gonna call uh, mkdir, mkdir, and in my home directory, I'm gonna create lab6q5, lab6q5. From the root of the file system. Okay, so we're gonna go to the root of the file system. Create three files in lab6q5 called program, people, and data. So I'm gonna do touch and then I'm gonna go to home, lab 6, Q5, and then in here I'm gonna create three files. So I'm gonna do program, dot py, comma, people, dot csv, and then data, dot xls, dot xls. Done. Now change your current working directory to user share. Okay, cd, user, and then share. Create a directory in the lab6q5 directory called movies. Okay, mkdir, lab6q5, movies. Create three files in lab6q movie and call them movies, Marvel, and Disney. Okay, so again, touch, lab6q5, movies, and then here we're gonna create uh, movies that LST, we're also gonna create Marvel, that TXT, and we're also gonna create this name, Disney, that DOC, enter. Now we're gonna remove program.py, people.csv, Disney.doc, and Marvel.txt, okay, so, now we're gonna do rm, and we're gonna remove from lab number six, q5, and then in here we have program.py, so we're gonna get rid of program.py. But what I want to do here is, I wanna do this in one shot. So I am going to provide brace expansion in this case. So I'm gonna remove program.py, but I'm gonna do a comma here, and I'm gonna do inside here, we have a folder called movies. So go inside movies, and from movies, delete people, oops, sorry. People exist outside, so we're gonna do people.csv, great. Disney is inside movies and Marvel is inside movies. So here we're gonna go Disney that DOC and then Marvel that TXT. Make sure you don't make typos, double check your command, read them as low, because we cannot use brace expansion in sorry, we cannot use double tap auto completion in this case. So you will need to type the names of the files as they are, right? So make sure you double check your spelling. So let's take a look at this complicated command real quick. So I'm gonna remove inside lab6q5 the file called program.py. Program I'm also gonna remove people.csv. 
But then inside movies, right? Inside that folder, I have Disney and Marvel. I can do Brace Expansion inside Brace Expansion with no problem. If we press enter over here, notice no errors were thrown. And if we do three, lap six, Q5, the files have been successfully removed. Again, pay attention to this command and try to understand it. I will not require two-level brace expansion in your final, but it's good to understand how this works. See, one file, two files, they are right over here, and then we have also a folder that we want to work with, so we're going to provide it a comma, the folder, and then the files in the folder that we want to get rid of. Notice the expansion over here, and notice the expansion outside as well. Okay, okay. This concludes the la the last part of lab number number six. Then what you need to do here is your challenge question. So you're gonna run this command. That's gonna create a, a lab six folder qu a challenge question. It's gonna call. It's gonna be called challenge lab number six. And all you have to do is follow the instructions. Create this entire directory structure and then move the files to their respective directories. You are required to use wildcards when needed and brace expansions for creating the directory structure. I need to see that you're using brace expansion and I need to see that you're using wildcards to move the files. Moving them one by one will not give you credit. With that said, if you have any questions, reach out to me via Slack and I'll be available. Now that we have completed this, I'm gonna take my last screenshot and I'm gonna create my submission. So we're gonna click save and we're gonna do question 4.2, enter. Okay, so I'm gonna do CD, clear, sorry, clear, and I'm gonna go to my CIS 106 folder, CD in two labs, and then lab number six. And here I'm gonna create a file called um, lab six D and I'm gonna open VS Code inside. Oops, I opened it in the wrong folder. That's bad, that's bad, that's bad. That's terrible, that is terrible. We wanna go back one, back another, and once I am inside my CIS repository, I am gonna open VS Code. Oops, sorry. Code period so that it opens VS Code in, the, in my CIS repository. You can do it the graphical way too, that's fine. I just wanted to do it in the command line to show you how it's done. Okay, now notice, make sure that you are in your repository here, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of trouble. Okay, now we are going to open our lab6.md file that we created. Again, name, your name, and then we go with course, CIS 106 and then semester fall 22. Say semester. And then we go here with lab 6 and question and then the number of the question. Right, so we have four, we have five questions. So this is question five, challenge, question four, question three, question two, and question one, and this we get rid of because we don't need. And then all we have to do is put our screenshots over here, right? So we have here Q1, so we do Q1.1.png, Q2, and then we do q2.png. The same thing with q3, q3, question 3.1, sorry. And finally, question four, and then question 4.1, and then question 4.2. And then you're gonna put your challenge question over here. Challenge goes here.
save your file, convert to PDF. If you're having problems converting to PDF, give me the markdown file and the URL to your markdown file. Uh, and then let me know so we can fix it. We're gonna do clear, pull, add, commit, lab six done, and a push. Then we go to our GitHub repo. Lab number six. And here is the file that you need to give me. So the URL to this guy over here. Ooh, there is a problem with question number three. Let's take a look. Yeah, I forgot the file extension. It, my apologies for that. So let's make sure we uh, do this here, PDF. I forgot the file extension over there, that was problematic. And we need to fix this. There you go, perfect. Okay, dokie, now we can successfully submit. Give me the, again, PDF and the URL to this. With that said, I see you in class or in the next video.